Hello and welcome to the recap of day three in the Karen Reed case. As you know, we ended abruptly Tuesday, didn't do anything yesterday, and today we picked up again with Famati, who is a firefighter. He was one of the people who uh, administered CPR to John O'Keefe at the scene with his body, we heard from Tuesday as well. That was the guy who clearly remembered John O'Keefe was very appropriate dressed for the climate with a big puffy jacket. This guy said, no, he had a a, a sweatshirt on. The other guy uh, had to retract his statement when uh, there was no uh, jacket found at the scene. Other than that, he only remembers seeing two women near the body. He doesn't remember seeing three. So uh, that's that's a bit of a surprise. Um, he said he was uh, underdressed. He was lacking a shoe that they didn't remove. Karen Reed was very erratic, but he talked to her, and she clearly stated to him, I hit him. Oh, my God, I hit him. And he asked, did you hit him uh, with your fist? Did you kick him? And uh, But he couldn't get anything out of her because she was so erratic. So he just uh, assumed that she must have hit him with a car. Because even though he never said anything about that statement before, just like the guy who testified on Tuesday, never mentioned anything about her stating she hit him, this guy uh, remembers telling the hospital that she hit him. He told, didn't tell anyone else. There's no police report. There's no hospital report of him stating that. But uh, he clearly remembers that. And he said it to the grand jury for the first time, just like his body. He. Uh, he didn't have any conversations after I hit him because she was so uh, irate. And uh, she talked to his female colleague, which we will be returning to. She's a little interesting. Beth became very de defensive today because in the start of the day, she talked about they were not allowed to uh, narrate videos. It was the jury who had to see with their own eyes what they believed was the truth in those. Probably because... Defense had a really good day Tuesday pointing out that uh, Jennifer McCabe walked to the house. So today they were a bit hamstrung about they weren't allowed to say, could this be that? Could this be this person? But we saw a video of him absolutely not talking to Karen Reed. We also saw in the video that his body who claimed that he had eye contact and uh, was very close to uh, Karen Reed couldn't possibly have had it according to the desk cam video we said those two clearly remembered her stating to them i hit him i hit him but uh the videos doesn't show them being anywhere near to him <clears throat> and um he doesn't remember anything he told proctor so yeah take it with a grain of salt assault he became very very forgetful when uh, the defense started to talk to him. Then on to the next witness. This is a young firefighter. He uh, was just starting out as a firefighter. This is Mr. Kelly. And uh, when he arrived at the scene, he had to leave the truck to see the body. And uh, he didn't really see anything because other people were walk, uh, working on John O'Keefe. He believes he was five feet from the road. And um, he know, noticed that he had that 80 degree body temperature. And uh, the state kept asking him if he, if he learned anything at the hospital. And he said, no, I, no, I didn't go back there. I didn't learn anything about it. Um, both him and the uh, the guy before said we could clearly see the body from the ambulance. You know, there's that narrative that oh, it was the worst snowstorm in history. But uh, both of them could clearly see the body from the ambulance and uh, stated that it was not covered in snow. The guy before said there was like three or four inches of snow, but on on the body, not that much. Um, then what else did this guy said? Uh, well, he he talked about lacerations to the arm. And he heard Karen Reed 
say and there was a video where you kind of could hear it but uh, i would really love if someone uh, who has a little more technical skill than i can clean it up he stated she said he's dead he is effing dead and then when you hear the video you can kind of hear the effing part he never saw the other shoe he didn't see any holes in clothes not uh, with the lacerations to the arm which is kind of strange that you can scratch your arm but you don't ruin your sweatshirt um, him and Noddle were at the body. Remember, Noddle was the guy who said, I had eye contact and talked to her, but he didn't hear what uh, he claimed he heard. Uh, heard. Um, and then they went into the ambulance and never talked to Karen Reed again. And after they got into the ambulance, the guy before couldn't really remember if he left the ambulance again, maybe to go pick up some equipment. This guy said, after we got in there, no one ever left the ambulance. And the funny thing, this guy, maybe it's because he's so young. He is the only EMT out of the three we have had so far who hasn't changed his statement. Because he has say, said the entire way through, he's dead, he's effing dead. That's uh, his testimony. That was his testimony on the first interview. And it was his testimony today. The next witness we uh, encounter will be Mr. Walsh. He uh, is also a first responder. He just arrived at the, as, the, uh, as they put John O'Keefe on the backboard to get him to the stretcher. He said roughly 10 feet from the road. He claims she stated to him, is he dead? Is he dead? Not, I hit him. This is in line with what the police officers testified on Monday and Tuesday. And uh, Karen Reed was clearly the most upset at the scene. Uh, the other woman didn't really seem that upset. He also uh, described the wounds to the arm uh, as laceration and scratches. <clears throat> so uh, again, he didn't hear anything the other people uh, testified to, she should have said. So now we have two police officers stating she said, is he dead? We have two EMTs claiming I hit him. We have one guy claiming, is he dead? He is effing dead. And we have this guy saying, is he dead? And then we come to uh, Le Surprise de Jour. That means the surprise of the day, Jamie, in French. The last witness we just started on, we didn't get to finish her, was this young lady, McLaughlin. She is uh, also an EMT firefighter who uh, arrived at the scene with the lieutenant and um, she, she had a conversation with Karen Reed. Karen Reed was distraught when she had a, that conversation, but she said, I hit him. And she said, what? I hit him. And uh, the other woman at the scene said, shut up, you're hysterical. And an officer said, what did you say? And she again said, I hit him. And then that officer called another officer down there, according to this woman, who then proceeded to go into the ambulance and tell everyone in the ambulance, Karen Reed just told me she hit him. There are absolutely no police report ever stating that I hit him. The police report summarized all declare that she was hysterical, unable to answer question. This lady said she gave him uh, me his date of birth, his name, everything. And then she made those very clear statements that I hit him. She said it three times. And uh, funny enough, she was very adamant. She told every EMT in the ambulance that she heard her say, I hit him. None of them testified that she was in the ambulance. None of them testified she ever said that to them. 
this young lady is in pictures with Albert's daughters, not Brian Alberts who live in the house, but his family's, um, he is his niece. Sorry, he she is a friend of his niece, brain fart. But um, she is also connected to the Alberts and she clearly heard Karen Reed state, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Which is funny when no one else other than the two EMTs so we saw in the video couldn't possibly have had the conversation. They said she's the only one who talked to Karen Reed that we know of stating, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. If you go looking on the internet, you can see her drinking with the Albert's niece. Funny little coincidence in that one. Cross will hopefully happen tomorrow. I'm looking forward to the cross of this young lady because uh, I really hope the defense can uh, make clear to the jury that uh, she might not be uh, totally without bias. Let's just say it that way. But half a day, did anything come out? Not really, other than more videos showing that what the state tried to put in to the timeline just doesn't add up. This case keeps dragging on because the state has nothing. And Bev keeps interrupting the, the, interrupting the defense because she knows how bad the state is doing. Thank you for watching.